Okay, we're back online. So what I'd like to do in the remaining um, 50 minutes, 52 minutes, <laughs> um, is go over some special uh, model specifications. And so far, we've covered um, the basic spatial autoregressive and moving average models and the basic mixed regressive, spatial autoregressive, and error uh, spatial error model. Uh, now there are three more specifications I want to spend a little bit of time on. One is this one, the spatial common factor specification, which shows you how you can express a spatial error model as a spatial lag model with particular constraints on the parameters. And then the other two are what we call higher order models, where you combine a lag dependent variable with spatial error correlation in the error term, uh, spatial error autocorrelation. Okay. And, and each of these has some implications for identification and particular constraints on the parameters that I want to highlight. And then at the second part of, of this afternoon, I want to briefly comment on spatial externalities and then we'll move on to the lab part. So the <coughs> spatial autoregressive error model is a standard regression model, the y is equals x beta plus epsilon, with a spatial autoregressive process in the error term. So that's the epsilon lambda w epsilon. In most of my notes, I use lambda for the autocorrelation parameter in the error term and rho for the one in the lag model, so just to keep them apart. Uh, that's not a, that's just my convention. That's not no standard convention. So what we do first is we solve out for the error term so we can substitute this reduced form, if you wish, the I minus lambda W inverse U, where U is now an IID error, an independent and identically distributed error term. We stick that back into the regression. So this is just algebra from now. Um, we get this expression where we have the dependent variable y, we have the standard regression part x beta, and then we have the inverse i minus lambda w times a regular not spatially correlated error term. So then if we pre-multiply this whole thing by i minus lambda w, what we get is on the left hand side i minus lambda w y then i minus lambda w x beta, and then u, because the i minus lambda w cancels out with the inverse. So this is, after some manipulation, a standard regression. What we're doing is we get these lags. We get the original variable, the original y, and the spatial lag of y. We get the original x and the spatial lag of x, and then we move them around so that we end up with a spatial lag model that also includes spatially lagged explanatory variables. Remember early on this morning when we talked about the spatial lag operator and how we could use that to spatially lag the dependent variable or the x variable or the error terms. Um, here we see, and I mentioned that we have to be careful when we use this in conjunction with other spatial effects. For example, in this case, it would not be wise to also include a WX in the original specification in here. Because then what we end up with is two WXs. The original one, which would be part of this part, and then the lags of the original one that are part from this manipulation to end up with this form. So that's one instance where there would be an identification problem if you include a spatially lagged explanatory variable in a model with a spatial error autocorrelation, spatial autoregressive error term. The other thing we um, need to notice here is that there are particular constraints on the parameters here, and these are called the common factor constraints. Namely, what we see here is that we have lambda as the parameter of the spatially lagged dependent variable, but lambda is also in here. 
in part as part of the parameter of the spatially lagged explanatory variables. So what we can do is we can actually test whether these constraints hold or not. And why would we want to do that? Because spatial error autocorrelation can take different forms. We've already seen it could be autoregressive or moving average or direct representation. In practice, we don't really know what form it takes. And as we'll see tomorrow, some of the specification tests we use cannot distinguish between an autoregressive or a moving average error process. The normal practice, because it's easier, as we've already seen, is to use and estimate an autoregressive model. But it doesn't have to be one. And this is one way, kind of a roundabout way, to check whether the autoregressive specification is actually the proper one. So the rationale is the following, and we'll see tomorrow how we do this. We test for spatial autocorrelation. We find that there is spatial error autocorrelation. Then we estimate a model like this, and we test whether the constraints, namely the coefficient of this one times the coefficient of this one, negative, has to be the coefficient of the WX. That's a constraint. If that constraint holds, we're fine. If that constraint does not hold, then the autoregressive structure does not hold. That doesn't mean the errors are not spatially correlated. What it means is that they don't follow a spatial autoregressive structure. They may be moving average or something else. So that's a diagnostic we use as kind of a, an after-the-fact test to see whether our spatial error specification is the proper one. <clears throat> so let's see how this actually works. So the unconstrained model is the model where we do not impose any of these restrictions. So that is simply gamma 1 for the spatial lag, gamma 2 for x, and gamma 3 for wx. And the constraint is such, as we just saw, that the first coefficient times the second coefficient has to be negative of the third coefficient. So we estimate them um, unconstrained, and then we test the extent to which the constraint holds. If the constraint is rejected, the implication is that the error process is not spatial autoregressive. If the constraint is not rejected, that means the constraint holds, then we're fine. So this is something you may see referred to in the literature as a test on common factors. Time series have a counterpart to this. It's very much the same rationale. You look at whether the constraints that are implied by the model are actually satisfied uh, in, by your data, so to speak. So in this case, the, there's two implications, two important things to remember from this common factor model. One is that if there is spatial autocorrelation in the error terms, use caution in incorporating a spatially lagged explanatory variable, a WX, in the model, because you have identification problems. The second one is that if you reject the common factor hypothesis, then your error model is not a SAR model. It's something else. So as a result, if you estimate it as a SAR mo mo model, there's a specification error. So you might actually make, be making things worse than they were to begin with. Well, something else could also be a, a spatial lag model. Right. It, so it could be a spatial lag model. Spatial exactly. Where rejection of the common factors means that the dynamics are different. Really yep. are one in the air. Exactly. And actually, I'm glad you point this out, because in space, there is another issue. And I didn't, for once, I didn't mention it. It's the weights matrix. So it could be a SAR model, but with a different weights matrix. Yeah. And, and that is the, the other implication. So I, in practice, I think it's a good idea to test this hypothesis. Um, it is so easy to simply put yourself in a mindset that it has to be SAR, but it really doesn't. And there's lots of processes that are different processes and give you spatially correlated errors that are not necessarily SAR processes. Okay, then the two higher order models, the first one we call a SAR-MA model, which is 
spatial autoregressive and then moving average for the errors. And it's just a combination of a model with a spatially lag dependent variable, the WY, and then a moving average for the error terms. And to keep things general, we use two different weights matrices. It, they don't have to be different. They could be the same. But in general, they don't have to be the same. And this is a model of a spatial lag with a non-spherical error covariance matrix. So this is more complicated to estimate. But there's no identification problem. And that is very clear which is which. The lambda and the rho don't get mixed up together. In contrast to this case, which is actually the most commonly, the more commonly used case, is a model with a spatially lag dependent variable and a spatial autoregressive error structure. And we refer to it as a SAR SAR model. It's a double SAR model, basically. So then, to get this uh, worked out, we have to, again, go to the reduced form, but now the reduced form is a little more complicated because we have two processes to deal with. And if you work this out, you move the lag over to the left-hand side, and then you get rid of the inverse by pre-multiplying just like we did with the common factor model before here, then we get a double filtered dependent variable and a singly filtered explanatory variable. Okay. We work this all out as just simple multiplication. We end up with something like this. And if we assume for now that the weights are the same, then we have a model that could cause us some problems. And in fact, you can get at this from, from two angles. One is just simply looking at this equation. And you see a model with lambda plus rho and here lambda times rho. That's always trouble. That's the classic identification problem. If two parameters get added together and multiplied together, then you can make one bigger and the other one smaller, and you still have the same sum and the same product. So that is an issue. And, and you can switch lambda and rho around, and you can't tell which one is lambda and which one is rho. If I relabel them, it's the same. However, this is not necessarily a problem. It's only a problem if we have no information here. So if beta is 0, then these two parts fall out, and then we can really not identify the two parameters. If beta is not 0, then we can use the additional constraints, because we have another one. We have beta and lambda beta over there. So the lambda in the lambda beta has to be the same lambda as the lambda in the lambda rho and the lambda plus rho. Now, it's not straightforward, but it's not impossible either. But it is much more complex than we are willing to admit necessarily, because it includes both a first and a second order spatial lag of the dependent variable. In the common factor model we just saw, there is only a first order spatial lag. Here we have two order spatial lags induced by the spatial autocorrelation, the, the SAR model, for the error term. And that creates a much more complex spatial interaction. Um, when you have the weights different but orthogonal, what does this mean? There are no common non-zero elements. Then it simplifies a little bit, and we basically get a lag model with one spatial weights matrix, a different lag model with a different spatial weights matrix, and then these cross product terms. And uh, again, we can test a common factor constraint in this specification. The reason I show you this is that it's a natural reflex for an econometrician to implement this model. It's a spatially lag dependent variable, that's a counterpart of a time lag dependent variable and then serial correlation in the errors translates into a SAR process for the error term. However, the model that comes out of this is much more complex and implies much more complex spatial multiplier effects because that was what we were after with these models. 
than we might think in the first place. Because you have to solve this out. You have to get rid not only of wy, but also of w square y. And so this the inverse is no longer i minus rho w inverse, but it's i minus lambda plus rho minus lambda rho w squared inverse, which is a much more complex uh, spatial spread phenomenon. So the fact that you also introduce these autoregressive processes in the error term make the whole multiplier effect much more complex and in fact much harder to interpret because you're mixing different orders of um, contiguity. So I just wanted you to know about these things. We won't actually be estimating them. They're much more, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it tomorrow, but we'll stick to the basic uh, mixed, regressors, mis, mixed regressive spatial autoregressive model and the SAR error model tomorrow when we do the maximum likelihood estimation.